Hi there, my name is Kobe Kingstrut. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome here, if it's your first time. I don't make that many videos anymore, but I have been quite open about my transition and everything in the past, and then something new has kind of happened, and so I'm making an update on it. About two, three months ago, I made a video saying that I identify as genderqueer, and I also mentioned in that video that I was stopping or taking a break from testosterone due to an unwanted side effect that was uh, a receding hairline. <laughs> um, so as you can see, it has receded a bit. Um, it's just, you know, a pretty average male hairline, I feel. However, I have noticed that it's enough that it has kind of stopped me from wearing my hair certain ways. This is how I usually wear my hair. I'm just wearing a hat today because because I got a new hat yesterday, which wasn't this one, but it inspired me to wear more hats. People have been asking me how it's going, and I thought I would make a video where I talk about that. I asked on Instagram whether people had questions, and they did. I tried to film this video once, but it was just repeating a lot of the same answers when answering questions. So I thought instead I'll just kind of go through it the best I can. Yeah, kind of that way, try and touch on everything. The first question was why I stopped tea. As I explained, it was due to a receding hairline. Going off testosterone, I wanted everything to stay the same, uh, which obviously isn't realistic, but that's kind of the, the thought I had about my body and everything going off testosterone. Yeah, so I didn't really have any like dramatic withdrawal symptoms or anything like that. I know some friends of mine who stopped testosterone they had kind of like menopausal symptoms with mood swings and hot flashes and everything like that. I didn't have any of that. It was a very smooth like transition for me. Yeah, I think that might be because due to my hairline, <laughs> a year before I decided to take a break from tea, I already started kind of stepping down. So I was on four pumps of uh, Tostram, which is like a testosterone gel, and then I went down to two pumps, and then after a while I started taking two pumps every other day, and then for the last couple of months before I started my break from testosterone, I um, just kind of started skipping, I stopped remembering, so I don't really know how many times a week I took tea, but it definitely wasn't every other day. And so I think that's why I didn't really have a dramatic, like, it's not like my system was full of testosterone and then suddenly one day it wasn't anymore. And uh, the reason why I'm saying a break from testosterone is because I, I have planned to go back on testosterone, but we'll see how I feel after being off it for a while, whether I can and feel okay being off of it. I uh, tried minoxidil uh, before I decided to stop testosterone to um, kind of stagnate my hair loss as well as hopefully maybe it would grow some back, but my skin just didn't, like, it became very irritated and sore and itchy and red and flaky, and I tried minoxidil several times and the same thing happened. I decided that until I find something that works for me. I'm just gonna take away that thing that causes the hair loss, um, because I thought to myself, I'm kind of blessed where I have <laughs> sort of the option to not be on the thing that causes the hair loss. And I know that not everyone, you know, some people going off testosterone is definitely not an option to them. Um, but to me, I felt kind of like I could, I was willing to do it now. A few years ago, I would not be willing at all, by the way. <sighs> to be entirely honest, I haven't noticed an awful lot of changes, but I'm also not looking for them uh, other than like this specific video. But as I mentioned, I wanted everything to stay the same I just didn't want to lose any more hair. And it was only really when researching for this video that I started feeling dysphoric. I was reading stuff about, you know, a, a lot of the time it was <clears throat> the transitioners of writing. So obviously to them, uh, going after testosterone was a very good thing and they were excited for the changes. But to me, reading about like feminizing and stuff like that made me feel really dysphoric. And so, um, I try not to think about it. But yeah, let's be real. So what have I noticed? So the first thing I noticed was my cycle coming back. It's not really a cycle, but I started bleeding. So I think that was like two or three weeks 
after stopping tea, I started spotting a bit. So that would be in January and then it disappeared until February and then it started back up again and it hasn't stopped since. And so I have been bleeding for like two months straight. It's not really like, it's not a lot of blood. It's just some spotting, but it's still noticeable that every time I wipe, there's like a blood clot. That's been annoying, but I'm going to the doctor tomorrow to get my uh, hormones checked out and just to see if everything's okay. I am also on the implant, uh, the progesterone based implant in my arm, Nexplanon, I think it's called, Nexplanon, Plenon, Nexplanon, I don't know, something like that. And um, I know that with that you can get super irregular bleeding. So some people lose their cycle, others get like a really irregular kind of weird cycle and then some people start bleeding more. So um, I think a lot of it has to do with my body getting used to like not being on tea anymore but also having that implant that is making it super irregular. But we'll see what the doctor says. Another thing I noticed <laughs> that really freaked me out was that I started getting really sensitive nipples. Um, kind of like how it felt when my nipples started growing, or like, not my nipples only, but when my chest started growing when I was young. I've had top surgery, so it's not like it should grow back or anything like that. Um, you know, some changes can occur over time, but I haven't heard of anyone having top surgery and then stopping tea and then having tits again. Still kind of freaked me out for a moment. And uh, it's just kind of annoying that they're really sensitive and kind of hurt. I also asked my boyfriend if he had noticed any changes. He said that um, natural lubrication has gone up, which is expected because when you go on testosterone, it kind of limits the amount of natural lubrication that you produce. And uh, it can also... A lot of people who uh, are on tea struggle with like severe dryness and vaginal atrophy, I think it's called. I've not had anything like that. We've always used lube, but it's just because I think everyone should use lube anyway. But the natural pr production has picked up, which is kind of cool. Uh, I will say that. I haven't really noticed anything else. My dad commented that my stomach has gotten flatter, um, which I don't know if that's just because I've lost some weight. I've had knee surgery, so that has really limited the amount of snacks that I've been able to get up and eat. So it might just be that I've lost some weight. I usually lose some weight after Christmas anyway, but um, it could also be fat redistribution uh, that it has gone to my hips and my butt. But I don't really know if three months is too short of a time for that to really happen. I like my body the way it is right now, and I don't want it to be more feminine, but um, we'll see. Mentally and emotionally, I haven't really noticed any changes. I'll be honest, I think, again, that might be because I was already on a really low dose my last year of uh, testosterone, so it's not like it was a shock to my system or anything like that. I'm also on escitalopram or Lexapro, which is an SSRI, which is also a mood stabilizer that I've been on for years. Um, so that can also be why I'm, you know, feeling the same. I think that the last year before I went off tea though, I did notice that, like on lower dosage, I did notice that I was a bit more in touch with my sensitive side. So. If I was watching a film and I was touched by something that happened, I could like tear up. I've never been a big crier. I'm quite like happy with things usually. So I don't really, um, I don't really cry a lot. So that hasn't really changed. So I don't really think this is tied to not being on tea. But as I said, I have um, started identifying with the term genderqueer. I don't really identify as a trans man anymore. I still identify as trans masculine because, you know, that is what I am. But um, I don't feel binary and that's something that I kind of struggled with for years. I think a lot of the reason why I felt that I was binary was because of dysphoria, because I had really, really intense dysphoria. And that just pushed me to feeling like I only wanted to be presenting, you know, as super masculine and then being on tea and having had top surgery and everything and also being with a partner who is super accepting where I don't have to worry about how he sees me and all of that. It's kind of uh, made me more open to exploring parts of me that 
aren't strictly masculine. So I think right now I just identify as very androgynous. Like the reason why I use the term genderqueer is because I'm queer. <laughs> like I'm not straight in anything. So I it's the same with my gender. I can't really put it like in a binary or anything like that. I'm just queer and that's just how it is. I am also starting to like be more comfortable with people just assuming I'm whatever they think I am. Uh, <laughs> obviously my friends and family, I want them to respect that I prefer he, him pronouns. And uh, socially, I like to pass as a guy, unless I'm looking very androgynous and it's about safety, you know, sometimes if... I have been getting uh, mistaken for a trans woman a lot recently. And that's been kind of scary because people have been uh, harassing me a lot. So if one, if there's one positive about going off tea, it's my face changing. It's, I mean, it's always been kind of soft, but if it makes people, when I'm looking androgynous, think that I'm leaning, leaning towards the feminine side and they think I'm a girl, then that's safer. So um, there's that. I've also been, Opening up to the idea of people using they, them pronouns for me, I they used to make me feel really dysphoric because it felt like they were invalidating my masculinity, but I think at this point, uh, it's just natural that people will use those pronouns for me. Plus, like, it's neutral, like, it's a vibe, but yeah, he, him is still, like, what I go for. He, they, I'll say. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say about this, really. Not super exciting because there's not really been a lot of changes, but again, I'm not really looking for changes. I would like to just stay the same, <laughs> just with more hair would be nice. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to you. I am quite busy with uni at the moment uh, and, you know, being on my phone, I'm trying to do that less. So I'm not as available, but... Uh, Leave me a comment anyway, and I'll try to get to you. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you're having a beautiful day or night, wherever you are, and that you are enjoying the season, whether it's spring or autumn, depending on where, the, where you are. And thanks for sticking around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hi, Biden. Okej, okay, ska du dra någon strax då? Ja, jag måste skifta någon. Okej. Okay. Boyfriend.